What's up guys and welcome back to another video from me and today the video we're going to be doing is the uh, review of Project Cars. Um, currently on screen you see the Xbox One version, it will probably be applicable to the PlayStation version and the PC version as well. Um, and I just want to stress from the start, these are my opinions on this game. Um, they may well differ to the opinions of everybody else, um, or you, or you might agree with them. Um, but they are my opinions, so I'm not saying how it is and how it will always be, um, but they are just my opinions. Um, also, I, was, I, I thought it was important before I do any review footage of this that I actually got time to play the game. Um, and even before getting any gameplay footage up, um, I thought it was important to get the settings videos out for all the wheel and the controller and the force feedback. Because um, there are a hell of a lot of people that have been struggling with this game um, to even get the car around the track because the extensive options you have um, for setting even your controller up um, is just mind-blowing there are a lot of options and if you've got a wheel there's even more options on top of that just to get the force feedback right um, it is very complex it is very confusing if you're stuck on any of that go and click on um, my previous videos go through that hopefully they'll help you out and um, they help me out a lot and I've got car handling um, how I'd like it and I, got, I wouldn't say I know everything about it but I know roughly what they do and how I can adjust them to get them to work um, so I thought it was important to get those videos out first to help people actually enjoy the game um, and get into a stage where they can get the car around the track and actually race as opposed to just getting frustrated because the car's spinning out and whatever. Um, I've also had a, been three or four days now since it came out, so I've had some time to play it. Um, I've done very a small amount of career mode. Um, I've mainly spent my time in multiplayer racing with friends, um, but that's given me a good idea on how the car cars handle, how the game plays, uh, and the functionality of it as well. So I'm going to go through this because I know some guys in the US haven't still got this yet and some of you around the world might be thinking, do I want to get it, do I not want to get it? Hopefully this review will help you make up your mind. I'm also going to put a link in the description below as well to a video from Empty Box. Um, for those of you that don't know Empty Box, he's a well respected member of the sim racing community um, and he's done a video that goes into why the hype was so big for this game. The hype for this game was probably the biggest hype that I've known in any recent years um, the excitement that coming out for this game um, but click on that after you finish watching this because it is quite interesting um, he was part of the initial um, like funders um, where he got an early copy of it and helped develop the game um, so it is quite interesting to hear his opinions uh, I'm also going to I've also got the PC version of this game as well so I've got Xbox one and PC um, so I'll cover what the differences are graphically wise because I know there were some um, there were a lot of comments have been made saying well the Xbox One version isn't as graphically as good as PC version um, and yes that's the case it's not as um, graphically good as the PC version uh, but mainly because the cost of a decent graphics card is about the same price as an Xbox One so there is no way that the Xbox One version is going to be able to compete with a fully spec gaming PC but saying that it's still damn good on the Xbox One. There are little things on the PC version, such as when the cars in front of you break, their lights reflect off the road, um, especially it happens especially in the wet. Um, that I haven't seen that happen in the Xbox One version, but if you're only playing the Xbox One version, those little differences, you won't even notice. You won't notice there. It's only after I played the PC version that I noticed some of the things were missing out the Xbox One. I was perfectly happy with the Xbox One version the way it looked when I played that first, um, so you will have no qualms or no problem with it at all. Um, also on Twitter I've seen quite a people um, not have a go at Turn 10 and Forza but kind of compare this game to Forza um, and it's very difficult to make that comparison because Forza 5 is a game that's well over a year old um, while, and while that game's been out and we've been playing it, this game's been being developed. Um, so it's very difficult to do it like for like because they're not like for like games. This is a sim racing game, Forza 5 isn't a sim racing game at all. It's got sim aspects to it, um, such as the tuning of the cars uh, and, and that, that side of it. Um, so it's got a sim aspect to it, but it's not a sim racing game. Um, but also with Project Cars, Project Cars hasn't got the vast array of car lists. Um, so if you want, wanted to drive a car um, in the real world, you couldn't necessarily do it on Project Cars because it might not be available. Whereas Forza, Forza's 5 car list is quite extensive. Um, so they do aim at totally different markets. So understand that it's not a like for like comparison. Um, and I fully expect when Forza 6 comes out it will 
blow everything else out of the water. Um, I fully expect it to be a new, a new engine, graphics engine, um, and they will update a lot of things and will introduce a lot of things. I strongly believe that the fact that they've got day to night transitions and weather in Forza Horizon 2 will transition across to Forza 6. Um, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be able to do that. Um, so expect good things when Forza 6 comes out, but don't compare this directly to Forza 5. Um, I don't think it's a fair comparison um, and it's not like for like. Um, also, um, the handling wise on this, I know a lot of people were concerned about how the cars were handle. Uh, and yes, there are some difficulties. That's why I brought out my um, setup videos, mainly to try and help the guys just even keep the car on track. It's not a game where you can just jump on and be fast straight away. You do have to invest quite a bit of time on either setting your control up or setting your wheel up. Um, there is no way you can just jump on and be super fast straight away it's something literally god knows how many hours to try and get an understanding of all the options for the wheel um so if you get in this game or you um have got this game you do have to send uh, quite a bit of time on investing sorry it's just gone dark there uh investing time into setting your controller up appropriately the more you do that the more enjoyment you get out of the game um so i'm just going to go over some of the options give you guys an insight into what's actually available in game as well um, also with project cars I found that as many people are going to be jumping on the bandwagon and saying yeah it's the most amazing game in the world it's, it, it's super awesome um, there isn't a better driving game than this to be honest project cars hasn't really done anything different to any other sim racer they haven't recreated the wheel um, they haven't made a giant leap forward um, there's a lot of PC sim racing games out there that um, do exactly the same thing. They have day to night transition, they have weather involved, they have race cars in there. A lot of them already do this already, have been doing for a number of years. So PC wise, project cars, for me, hasn't broken down any boundaries. The one boundary they have broken down is then bringing that to the console. Um, there's no game like this um, available for the Xbox One, there's no game like this for the PS4. Um, so that's where they've made that giant leap into console racing. They have raised the bar for consoles, um, and that's a good thing because then pushes all the other developers to even raise it a li little bit more, which means as an end result, us gamers get a better finished product. Um, so don't always knock the games that are before it's been worse because when the next game comes out, this will be worse than the next game. Um, so it's an ongoing cycle and we just benefit from it. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the settings now. Um, so we have the career mode setting. Um, I won't go into too much depth in this because I don't want to add too many spoilers for you. Um, I did start my career in the Renault Clio's um, race around Donington, had a couple of races. Um, so I've got a rough idea what the AI are like. I've used them online as well, um, so I know how they roughly how they drive and how they react. Um, they aren't the best AI in the world, they aren't the worst AI in the world. Um, I've seen some weird things where they crash into pit walls and um, just swerve left for no reason, um, but that's just built into the game. Um, so don't expect them to be super awesome um, AI um, they are very good I've got I usually have my uh, career settings AI set on anything between 85 and 100 it usually gives me quite a good challenge and once the, the fields thinned out after the first lap or so um, it becomes a lot better it's always that first lap struggle um, where the AI are doing crazy things and uh, so hopefully it should do um, you, won't, you won't be disappointed by it, it will give you a good race, it's just finding that level uh, of what difficulty you want on. Um, so I'm not going to go too much into that, but you can do your career, you can continue it, you can start a new one, or load or delete, so I imagine you can have multiple careers on the go, if you so wish. Um, free practice is pretty much where I've uh, set, spent most of my time testing cars out and tracks out. Um, I won't go into too much settings here, because these settings are identical to the quick race weekend. Um, so here you can pick all your tracks, so you've got a full list of all the tracks that are available and all the variations, you can pick whichever car you want. Um, and while the car list isn't that extensive um, compared to the likes of uh, Forza or Gran Turismo, um, the, the choice of cars I've got in here are quite varied and do offer you different challenges depending on what you're driving on. Um, there is pretty much something for everybody in here, so I haven't got any uh, negative things to say about the car choice or the different cars you've got available. Then you can set up the uh, event, so number of laps, number of opponents, on this track it only goes up to 29 but I know it does go up to 44. Um, the type of opponents you've got, you can either have people in the same class, so if you're racing a GT3 you'll have a, a wide variety of different GT3 cars in there. You can have identical cars, so everybody drives the same car, single make. Uh, Multi-class, what I have found with this is it does pull random cars in from random classes which makes it a bit difficult. Um, I haven't found an option where you can actually do like a GT3 and an MP race. Um, it's pretty much 
luck when you do it. Uh, opponent skill goes up to 100, that's the most you can get it. Uh, rolling starts, we've got option yes or no, so standing or rolling. Um, and then all the practice uh, qualifying and warm up times, you can have up to 90 minutes. Qualifying is on 30 there, but it does go up to 90 as well. Then you've got the weather slots. Um, so you can have fixed weather and then random, so you have no idea what it's going to be, or you can set it up however you want. And then you've got the option to go two, three, four uh, different types of weather that will progress during the course of the race. Um, you've got the weather progression here, so you can do up to 30 times, so it will cycle really, really fast depending on, on the length of your race. And you can also sync it to the race as well, so it depends how long your race is, depends on how fast the weather changes. Date type, um, current, so it will just set it to whatever time it is, currently it's 27 minutes past 7 here in the UK, and it's got a starting time of 7 o'clock. Um, you can change that, but it's just set it up automatically for you. Um, race date, I don't know what that is, why it locks it on that, so, um, but you can also do a custom one as well, and increase the time progression and how fast it does that cycle between day and night. Um, online, uh, you have options um, to search for online lobbies, so you can do circuit racing, karting, and point to point. Event length, short or long, uh, depending on how long you want to race for, your vehicle class. Um, so you can do karts, prototypes, road, road A, road a GT4, GT5, GT3, so you can narrow it down to what you want to race. Uh, and then your skill level, novice, amateur, or pro. When you start the game up for the first time, it will ask you to pick one of these. And I believe this is based on your um, assists and uh, level of driving ability, so to speak. Um, so when you're searching for these, it actually tries to put you in people with the same skill as you. That's not to say that somebody who's never played the game before hasn't selected pro um, and just gone into this as well. So don't expect amazing things from the online lobbies. Um, but I haven't done the hoppers, um, so don't quote me too much on that, but I'd imagine it'll be the same as pretty much every other uh, hopper. Uh, creating your own online game with friends, Everything's pretty much the same as the other settings. You can have private or public, a uh, number of laps, maximum grid size, whether or not you want to race with AI, um, all the different start settings, conditions, so that's the weather, uh, restrictions, and any restrictions you want to apply to the lobby, um, depending on how you want to set it up. Um, but quite a lot of options in there. I quite like it. I've got some good ideas set up for the forum. Um, so the forum that, gonna, that I run, we're going to have some series races on there. So it should be quite interesting. Um, and then if you're feeling super brave, you can just click quick random. Have no idea what you're going to race against, who you're going to race, and probably end up in the crash in the first corner, which is how it usually is. Then we have the driver network. So these are different challenges um, that they've put on here for us. So everybody drives the same car, no setups, uh, nothing like that, I believe and you can just race against here and see how you compare to other races within the world. Um, I have done one, I've done the Renault Clio Cup. Um, last time I looked it was about 80th. Um, we'll just try and find myself now. I'm down, down to 93, so more and more people are doing it uh, and going faster and faster. Um, so that's quite good if you like comparing yourself against other people in the world in stock cars. There is also the time trial event, so you can choose by track. Um, type of car that you want to have a look at the leaderboard whether the ghost is best in session your best or the leaderboard best uh, and then which car you want um, the only problem with this is i found the open wheel if you know how to do this then let me know um, for instance there all top of the leaderboard is all formula a so that's formula one cars um, so you would expect them to be at the top if you want to see where your time in a formula c car compares against it it's very difficult, you're going to be very low down the leaderboard. So I wish there was a way you could actually cycle between your car individual category as opposed to just looking at all the open wheel ones. Hopefully it's something to bring in if it's not in already. If it isn't already, then let me know because I would like to have a look at that. Um, so that is pretty much, um, you've got your garage as well. In your garage you don't collect all the cars, basically all the cars are already open. Um, this is where you can create setups. Uh, there's a coming soon thing there as well, so I'm not too sure what that is. Um, you can also take photos um, so you can change the filter distance and the focal depth and I haven't messed around with that too much because it's quite difficult to do with my wheel. The info on your car so it gives you a very pretty look at your car and gives you all the stats and everything for it. Um, and then you can also go onto my profile which tells you which car you've used the most, which is your favourite track, um, what, how much time you've spent in different disciplines, how much time you spent on racing, qualifying, engineering, how well you've done different tracks, your online performance uh, and whatnot. So it's pretty d damn good, intensive. There's all your challenges, um, historic goals, accolades, endorsements, invitations. I haven't looked at any of them yet. Um, it's been focused on enjoying the game for a little bit before I start challenging myself 
Highlights is where all your replays are saved. Um, I've got two and I have heard that the replays only save for so long. I haven't tested that out yet. Um, so if you're doing an hour long race, it may not save the hour long replay. I've got to do some testing on that. I'll get back to you. Um, options and help is vast and intensive. Um, I've gone already gone over that in my other videos. Um, but that gives you pretty much a idea of what to expect. Um, I will be doing some more gameplay videos, whether or not it's um, let's plays of my career mode. If you want to see that let me know below because I don't want to spend the time doing it if nobody wants to watch it um, so leave me some comments below let me know what you if you want to see it what you want to see me race um, and I'll try and sort some of them out for you um, but yeah overall this game out of 100 I'd probably give it 92 um, plainly because there is nothing else like this available on the Xbox one and it's allowed me to race with all my friends uh, that don't have a, a gaming PC um, we've had quite a lot of fun um, testing all the cars out on different tracks so if you're sitting on the fence at the moment you're not too sure about it and you like sim racing games um, then I would suggest you go and buy this but the golden rule is you're gonna have to invest some serious time in setting up your controller or setting up your wheel if you don't do that you won't enjoy the game as much um, so there's a quick tip from the stig as the demo intro kicks in um, but I hope this has found this helpful guys if you have feel free to leave it a like leave me a comment subscribe if you're new to my channel and until my next video I'll see you all soon